Welcome, everyone. Everyone has a story. The neighbor, the, the guy across the street, your coworker, everyone's got a good tip. Everyone seems to be making money in different strategies. We're going to talk about all the different angles here and how it's best for you to stick to your plan. Kevin, I'm sure you've heard this before. You're walking down the street, you, you run into a friend, and they got a hot stock tip for you. What do you do? Yeah, everybody's in that boat, right? I mean, it doesn't matter who you talk to. Somebody else is doing better than you are. And that's the way it always is. Well, you know, this person's done that. I mean, this person's buying this. Why aren't you buying this? How come this guy didn't do this beforehand? It, it all comes mm -hmm. down to that same scenario. Everybody's doing better than you are based on, you know, what you're hearing from it. And it can be anybody. It's the bartender down the street. I mean, at times where everything's really good, everybody's doing that. And again, it all comes down to the fear of missing out scenario. That's the biggest factor. And it doesn't matter whether it's financial, it can be in life sports as well, or things along those lines. If you have that fear that, you know, somebody bought this, then I might as well buy it now, because if I don't buy it now, I'm going to miss out on that run. We've seen that in the marketplace more than enough times. Every time the market starts to go up, People just jump into yeah. it. Why? Well, it's yeah. going to continue going that way. I, I got to buy now because I'll miss out otherwise. And that's not always the case, is it? Yeah. What was on the screen there, I should mention, that's the, the different dictionary definition, Merriam-Webster definition, their fear of missing out. And everyone's got a friend. It's got a, an uncle, a, a cab driver, someone that it seems to be making more money yep. than them, right? It seems to be they, they got cash just coming in. They're in the Bitcoin trend, whatever the latest trend is. Often when there's a big trend, an asset bubble, it happens even more so, but the overall concept is we convince ourselves the grass is green, right? Everyone else is doing better than us. Uh, yeah. and, and maybe that's true, maybe that's not the case, but we're gonna go through a couple of tips to help cut through that, cut through some of the noise and actually stick to the strategy. And the first one here, Kevin, and I think this is a key one, is the whole idea stories aren't really helpful for investing. No. No, they're no. really not. I mean, that's the biggest factor. I mean, if you ever take a look at people that are big gamblers or anything along those lines, you always hear about their great wins. Oh, I won 10 grand playing this at the, at the casino last night. They yeah. don't ever tell you about the great losses they've had. And that could be much bigger than what the great win is. And again, it's biased. It's the one incident that you've had to happen there. Same sort of thing in the stock market. Maybe I bought NVIDIA six months ago. Great. I've had a wonderful win. And should I continue to buy it now? Well, it, it's not helpful. And maybe you didn't buy it six months ago. Maybe you bought it a month ago, but it's gone up. So again, you get that big fish story that, you know, it was this big. By the time the story gets there, it came this big and that's how things work. But you're right. Every story has a bias to it. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's the way it happened or that they're lying. But the point of the matter is, is that it's directed to what they've done. Yeah, it's very emotional, right? Humans, we're yep. emotional beings, and that fills into our stories. We like stories, right? That's why we like movies. That's why we like books. We want an entertaining story, but that is not exactly. a good way to invest. So you really have to cut through all of that. And if you hear a great story, well, I hope it's true. hope that person did well, but it has zero influence on how you actually invest your money. You really should not be, be biased by any kind of story, and ideally, you turn the emotion off when you're making the financial decision. Very tough to do, but just recognizing... Mm -hmm that those stories are not data. They're not actually helpful for any investment. And then the second tip here, and this one is key, there is no free lunch. There is no quick yep. get rich quick scheme. There is no magic solution where we just put the money in and suddenly you get $3 million raining down from the sky. There is always, always risk. There's always a trade-off. And if you don't see it right away, well, you're probably not looking hard enough. Like there is no free way or easy way to get rich quick. It's always a risk parameter and perhaps you're not comfortable with that risk and you should really know that before you make any kind of investment. I think this is the key that most folks miss, right? If you're in the stock market, well, the risk is stocks don't always go up, they go down. There's no strategy in which it always goes up. There's always a strategy that might do well in this period, bad in another period. GICs were helpful, but the trade-off there is you have to lock up your money. So if you, you yep. need monthly income, well, that's probably not a good fit. And then there's a whole concept of inflation. There's always trade-offs. There's always a give and take uh, whenever you're doing any kind of investment. Yeah, and you get that fear of missing out scenario again, right? I mean, if you've been a fairly conservative investor your entire life and you go back to 2020 and start into 2021, well, if you watch Microsoft take off because everything yeah. tech-oriented went, you know, by the end of the year, it's like, I can't handle this anymore. Everybody else is making money, not me, and I buy into it. But again, you're dealing with risk. You buy in at the end of 2021, all of a sudden 2022 implodes on you. And you know what? That conservative investment style did not work for you, but you listened and you didn't realize that by doing this, there is risk involved in it. There's always that yeah. trade-off and it has to be looked at every time.
Yeah, it kind of hammers on the point. There is no magic bullet. If there was an easy way for everyone yep. to be a billionaire, where well, we'd all be billionaires, and clearly that's not <laughs> the case. So there, there's not no. an easy solution, unfortunately. There's not a magic one. You hit a good point. I'll pull this up as an example. You talked about Microsoft. Uh, yep. Same era, you had Arc, which did very well in 2020. Uh, coming out of the pandemic, their investment strategy was certainly in favor. They hit it at the right time. But you can see what happened at end of 21 and into 2022. Mm -hmm. They stuck with their strategy, which they're, they're, they're supposed to. They're supposed to follow their mandate. But that strategy simply was no longer in favor. No. It, it, all strategies are going to go through that. This is an extreme example where one year they made a lot of money and they gave it all back the very next year. But every strategy is going to go through something of that nature. It'll be in favor for a couple of years, out of favor for a couple of years. There's always going to be a trade-off. There's always going to be risk. This just shows it in a more extreme case where you had a big run-up and then almost right away you had everything kind of come back down to earth. And that kind of leads us to the third point here, which it's really about fit, right? You're different than me, the, than the down person down the street. That's right. You really have to start to think about, well, what is the goal? Really, why are we investing? Like, what is the purpose here? Are we investing for retirement? Do you want to spend time with the grandkids? Are we investing so we can donate to charity? Uh, are we investing for 20 years down the road? Are we investing to buy a house, which might be in six months? And what's our comfort zone with risk, right? You have to have that goal. You have to have that time frame. You have to have that risk tolerance. All of that works together, which means I'm probably going to have a very unique strategy that might be a little different than yours, Kevin, yeah. or different on the purpose and down the street. You have to have that in mind. So if I talk to my cab driver and they, or my Uber driver and they give me a different story, well, maybe that's working for them, but that really may not be relevant at all to what I'm trying to achieve, right? And we can't get caught up in the story. We really have to kind of iron down onto our specific strategy, what's going to work for our specific goals. And I'll pull this up here, Kevin, I'll let you go through it. I think it kind of hammers home that point because we know this intuitively, we do it in other areas, but we don't quite do it uh, perhaps uh, in the financial world. And that's the, the the point we have to get to here. So I'll just yeah, pull this up. Yeah, you mentioned that good aspect, you know, <laughs> exactly. You mentioned that fit goals, timeframes, risk. I mean, it, it, it all plays into the factor. But if we take a look at the Michael Jordan scenario on the playing your own game, yeah. let's remember when he played basketball, his body has to be constructed a certain way because you require certain things, stronger core, bigger legs, more jump shots and things along those lines. In baseball, when he's playing, it's completely different. Arm strength, chest size. Those are two different aspects. Now, both are games that are played, but the body construction is completely different. As they mentioned, marathon runners are not power lifters. Power lifters yeah. have a couple hundred pounds and huge development in their body. Whereas if you're a runner, you're the exact opposite. You do not have a lot of weight. You are much more lean and much more constructed for running. And as ESPN does, you know, covering anchors don't pretend that golf and mixed martial arts are the same sport. You can't yeah. do it that way. So again, even though we're talking about sports and we're talking about it in a general scenario, each sport, each body type, everything else is different than what the construction may be. Not one size fits all for everyone. Yeah, and this is from Morgan Housley. has a great podcast where he made this point. And we know this intuitively in sports, but it's the same thing in the financial world, right? And everyone's playing a different game. Everyone has a different strategy. And he kind of hammers it home on the second slide here with the quote that really drives to that point, right? There is no world where mm -hmm. two equally smart and informed people should agree on the best way to save, spend, and invest because everyone is different. We're all trying to achieve different things. Yep. What you want might not be what I want. What's fun to you might be miserable to me. Your family is different than mine. Your job different than mine. You have different life experiences, different role models, risk tolerance, social ambition, ambitions. You can see the point here. So one of the most important financial skills, this is the quote at the bottom of the slide, is figuring out what game you're playing and playing it and only it. So figuring out your goals, the strategy that's appropriate for that specific goal, and then sticking to it and only it. And then this is kind of a, a caveat here or a final point, again, from Morgan Housel. In his opinion, a lot of financial debates, which we see quite a few of those on TV, certainly on social media, people yelling at each oh, other right. on Twitter and other social platforms. It's really just people with different goals, different time horizons, and they're talking past each other. If you have yeah. someone that's actually thinking about the same unique goal, saying, hey, I want to buy a house in three months and we we'll both have a three-month time frame, well, our differences in terms of strategy won't be that vast. We'll probably be into a certain point because we have the same parameters. And it's usually on social media and the talking heads on BNN and other networks, they're not using the same parameters and they're kind of just talking past each other. But it makes for good TV. I have to admit that. It does. 
So if you have a final point here, Kevin, it is all about fit, which brings us to the motto. I'm going to tee this up for you here. What is the, the Becker or motto? motto? The, Bec the Becker or mantra of having a plan. And that's the biggest thing, right? I mean, you mentioned it's got to be a fit. Your plan is not somebody else's plan. What you're doing is different than what I'm doing. And again, time frames, risk tolerances, what you want. So, I mean, that fear of missing out, you cannot buy into that completely. Yeah. I mean, just if you're a conservative investor, the fear of missing out by buying in tech stocks is not a smart move. It doesn't fit with your plan. It's not your game. It's not what you should be playing. Having that plan, following that plan, regardless of the ups and downs of the noise in the market, is basically what you really need to do. And make sure that you're following that to mm -hmm. the T because that's going to get you to your goals. If you start playing things in between, who knows how that's going to end. But other than that, I think we've covered most of the points that we need to deal with on this. If yeah. they want to get in touch with us and talk about anything, Clint, what do we do? Of course, you have to go visit the website, chatwithclintonkevin.com. You can see it on the bottom of the screen there. It's part of the website. Fill it in. It comes directly to us. We'd love to hear from you. We reply to all the folks uh, that do come through the website. So please do reach out uh, through chatwithclintonkevin.com. We also have other videos. You like this one, you're probably going to love our next video, which is on how to stop sweating the small stuff, how to prioritize your financial decisions, probably floating on the screen somewhere. So you can click on that one and we'll see you again very soon. Take care, everyone.